This video is an excerpt from a much longer European travel skills talk. To view other topics or to watch my travel skills talk in its entirety, visit ricksteves.com or check out my Rick Steves YouTube channel. Thanks. Money and safety. You're going to spend your money in Europe and you're going to have a lot of people wanting your money. They're going to want it in a legal way and there's people that want it in an illegal way. I want to talk for just a few minutes about money and money issues. Remember, in Europe these days, nearly everybody has the same coins jangling in their pockets. Euros. 300 million people have the same euro coins jangling in their pockets. In the old days, we had to change money with every border crossing. Now the luxury is, you cross a border, you got the same coins. You change too much money and you fly home with it, you go back next year, you got the same coins, it's still good. So, that's a beautiful thing. When it comes to changing money, the days of traveler's checks are so long gone. The beautiful ATM is there, and it is my, I, I just have nothing wrong to say, nothing bad to say about ATMs. You get the utopian bank-to-bank -bank rate 24-7, instead of the miserable tourist-to-teller rate. You'd be hard-pressed to find any bank that would change cash right now. You got to find an ATM machine, and you slip your traveler, you sli slip your debit card into that machine, you got your four-digit numeric pin, four numbers, and you get hard cash. Don't change a bunch of small exchanges, because every exchange you, you lose a little bit with the conversion rates, but you also lose with a fee. So you want to minim you can't avoid the excursion, the conversion rate problem, but you can minimize the fees. So instead of $100 a day, change $400 every four days, and you'll cut your fees by 75%. You'll find ATM machines everywhere you go. In the old days, we used to bring some cash with us from home to get started. No more. You can get your cash while you're waiting for your baggage at the airport. It's very, very cool. 24-7 in front of the casino, at the airport, at the train station. You don't need to worry that there's a holiday or a strike tomorrow. Remember, it's expensive to employ people in Europe these days. Europeans are, are, are very well paid, and there's a huge incentive for companies to automate. If you're like me, you're uncomfortable giving your credit card to a machine in a foreign country. You'd rather talk with a person. If you insist on that, you're going to pay a premium, you're going to get lousy service, and you're going to wait in a long line. You are the last priority. You're bucking the system. It's really important to recognize that next to every long line at a ticket office, there will be a machine that says, self-service tickets. This is for you. Now you go there, and you stick your credit card in or your debit card in, and you punch English, and then you do your thing, or you put in the cash. But this is really a blessing, and we have to get used to it, and frankly, I think we need to trust it. When I'm hanging, I'm, I'm disinclined to do this, but I'm getting better and better at it. When I'm hanging out with my European guides, they just swing from one machine to the next, and they go very fast. I've missed a lot of trains, because I didn't know how to use the machine, or I wasn't comfortable with the machine. Try to figure out those machines, and when you do, you feel good about it. The credit card is something that is causing a lot of American stress these days, because Europeans have a more advanced credit card than we do. They have a card called a chip and pin card, and we have a traditional magnetic strip, or we have a, a chip in our card that is not a chip and pin, but it's just a pin where you still have to sign. Uh, so you could even have an up-to-date card here, and you're going to still have the uh, frustrations that Americans have in Europe, because Europeans have more high-tech cards than we do. Now, you'll hear scare stories about this, but I've got the lousy American-style debit card and credit card, and I use it all the time, and it's rarely a big deal. It's just a little bump in the road. Automated gas stations after midnight, you can't buy gas with an American credit card, right? Getting a Coca-Cola from the machine down the hall in your hotel, you can't use your credit card. Automated parking booth, you can't use your credit card. You got to go to the uh, ticket guy and get it and pay for it in cash. So just remember, with our American cards, you got a little bit of a glitch, but it's not a big deal. You can certainly get your cash advances from ATMs. You can certainly pay for your hotel, rent your credit, rent your car, buy things on the internet, and so on. Europe is a very safe place from a violent crime point of view, and it's a very dangerous place, especially if you're a tourist from a petty purse snatching and pickpocketing point of view, and from a con artist point of view. Con artists are fascinating in Europe, and uh, you'll see them all over the place. You've got the classic uh, shell game going on, and you've got all sorts of friendly people that want to buy you a drink, and these kind of things that you got to be pretty naive to sucker for it. On the other hand, a lot of us are just in a good mood over there. We want to trust people, and we find ourselves in trouble. 
I hesitate to say be paranoid about it, because you lose opportunities to meet people. But I would say it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to connecting with people that can get you in a jam that are going to cost you a lot of money to get out of. So be on the ball when it comes to meeting strangers on the streets. Certainly steer away from any kind of a scam. In Germany, I recently I was in, a, I was in Mun uh, Berlin, and the police were actually demonstrating how the shell game works, because it was so prevalent, and so many people were falling for it. So be, it's fun to be on the street. I love to be on the street with all the commotion. But remember, when you see these scams going on, not only are people getting ripped off playing the scam, but they're getting ripped off watching the scam. Because wherever there's a commotion, there's pickpockets at work. They're working together. If there's a commotion, it's a fake commotion. If there's a pushing match on Plaza Mayor in Madrid, people gather around, people jostle, people are getting their pockets picked. If there's a commotion getting onto a train car, people's pockets are being picked. If an old lady falls down the escalator in the underground in Munich, step back. Pockets are being picked. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but then you can move in and help out. But remember, when there is a jostle, when there is a crowd, when you're on the most popular tourist bus going from the train station to the Vatican in Rome, that's where the thieves are. You're going to meet a lot of people with beautiful eyes, beautiful children, and sad stories. They step right up and say, Euro, please give me a Euro. They don't want a Euro, they want your wallet. Beggars are pickpockets. You should just understand that. European thieves target Americans, not because they're mean, but because they're smart. We're the people with all the good stuff in our purses and wallets, and they know how to get it. I like to watch it. For me, it's kind of sport to see this in action, but I know that when somebody comes up to me and asks for a Euro, they really want my wallet. And they target tourists, and they target tour guides. They're very, very good. It seems like she's holding her baby. But she's got a long arm. It's her scarf that may be holding her baby, and she's got a long arm that knows how to do the work. Again, if you have a commotion, if you're jostling to get onto that subway car, that's the perfect time for a pickpocket to grab your wallet. And this is remarkably easy to get, isn't it? I mean, it's right there. It's amazing to me how easy that is to get. And it's amazing to me. It's invasive to me when I'm targeted that way. So use a wallet, use a purse, but expect to lose it, okay? expect to lose it. Everything that matters should be in your money belt. It's a nylon pouch that you weigh around your waist, tuck it in like your shirt tail. You don't get at this for every nickel, dime, and quarter. This is your deep storage for select deposits and withdrawals. When you're wearing a money belt, it's luxurious peace of mind. Think about it. When you're wearing a money belt, all of your essential documents are on you as thoughtlessly and securely as your underpants. You ever think about the underpants, you put them on in the morning, you don't even think about them all day long, and every night they're exactly where you put them. <laughs> and now when I'm traveling, my, you know, my, my year rail pass, my passport, my, my credit card are just as securely out of sight, out of mind. That money belt is so important. If you're wearing a money belt, and if you know the thieves, uh, the, pick the beggars are actually thieves, it just, it takes all the stress out of it. In fact, when you're wearing a money belt, and if you know the, the, the beggars are pickpockets, having a gypsy's hand slip slowly into your pocket just becomes one more interesting cultural experience. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me a couple times every year. A stranger's hand gently slips into my pocket, I just leave him there. <laughs> I just leave him there. You don't need to be paranoid. They're not going to strip and mug you. That's what they have to do to get your money belt. Zip up your pocket, you know? Button it away. If it's zipped up or buttoned away, it's good. If it's in the hotel, it's good. If it's in your day bag, it's bad. If it's in your pocket, it's bad. Okay? So you just got to know that. The most dangerous place is in your day bag. The second most dangerous is in your pocket, unzipped. The safest place is in your hotel room. I've never used a hotel safe. I just don't bother. Hotels, you know, remember your door is open for hours at a stretch. You don't want your computer and your money sitting on the bed. Tuck it away. But I've never, I've just pride myself, or I just, it's sort of my quality of life in Europe. I'm not paranoid about my valuables in my hotel room, and I've spent a lot of time in hotel rooms, and I just tuck things away out of sight, but I don't worry about locking it. It's much safer there than on the streets. Now, when it comes to your money belt, there's three different kinds of money belts that we sell, and uh, I think it's just a matter of personal choice. I like the standard nylon pouch tucked around your waist, under your pants. You can wear it around the back. Women like to wear it around the back sometime, but that's the standard thing. Uh, some people like to hang it around their neck under their shirt. Other people like this sort of uh, side deal where you hang it on your belt and you tuck it in. 
Uh, either way, as long as it's not in your pocket and is under your clothing, that's what it's all about. Exactly what you put in your money belt, it's kind of common sense, just the essential stuff. You want to wear it comfortably, it's got to be very light. So you just put your, your irreplaceables in it. And then, as I mentioned, I function with a wallet. I expect to lose this wallet. In it, it's got a day's, in my, uh, a day's spending money, odds and ends, and a funny little note to the thief. <laughs> it comes with a piece of paper in it that says, in five different languages, Dear thief, sorry this contains so little money. Consider changing your profession. Okay. <laughs> the point is, you can lose your purse, you can lose your wallet. If it doesn't have your, your, your passport and your, your driver's license, it's, it's really not a big deal. When it comes to security, here's sort of your options. As I mentioned, you've got your day bag, that's the most dangerous. You've got your wallet, and if you're in a comfortable situation, you can rely on that. You've got your money belt, which I wear when I'm feeling like it's a, a risky sort of venture. And also, in our bags, we design a security pouch that's like a money belt, but it clips into the inside of the, of the big bag, and the security pouch is the same fabric as the liner of the bag, so it's invisible. And it's not locked in or anything, but it's just clipped there, and that's a place where you know you got your money, you know you got your valuables, and a thief doesn't want to grab your big bag. A thief walking out of a hotel with a big bag is, is just not something they do. They just want to rifle the bag and grab your valuables, so I find that to be quite quite a, a good place to put my valuables. The security pouch that we clip into the bag, of course you can unclip it and put it in the hotel safe or take it with you or clip it to your day bag and so on, but you need to think about your personal arrangement for your valuables. Remember, in Europe there are a lot, lot of soft targets and there's a lot of concern about terrorism. Uh, Europe is a very safe place from a terrorism point of view. Every year 12 million Americans go to Europe and 12 million come back. If there's a terrorist event tomorrow, it doesn't change the reality that it's safer in Europe than it is here in the United States. Without belaboring that, please understand, every month in the United States, a thousand beautiful people are killed on our streets. That's real. Tomorrow, if an American is killed by a terrorist in Europe, that's a tragedy, but it doesn't change the fact that it's safer in Europe than it is in the United States. Europeans laugh out loud when they hear that Americans are staying home for safety reasons. You are statistically ten times safer on the streets in Europe than you are here in the United States. In other words, if you care about your loved ones, you'll take them to Europe tomorrow. <laughs> That's how we sell tours. <laughs> now, Europe is going to have its glitches, it's going to have its terrorist events, and if you hate terrorism as much as my do, I do, please understand the most powerful thing you can do to fight terrorism is not to overreact to it, not to freak out just because it's a media fest and they're going to bump up their viewership with hysterical coverage, and to remember that the most powerful things we can do as Americans to fight terrorism is to get out there and better understand the rest of the world. When we travel, it makes it tougher for their propaganda to dehumanize us, and it makes it tougher for our propaganda to dehumanize them. It helps us all connect and gain empathy for each other and celebrate the diversity on this planet and find ourselves more inclined to build bridges and less inclined to build walls. This is a powerful force for peace, and a powerful way to fight terrorism, I think, is to travel a lot. Please, don't let terrorism mess up your trip. Now, you're going to find that security over there, and you're going to have to be patient with it. In a lot of cases, to get onto a train, you have to go through security. In a lot of cases, to get into a, a great museum, you've got to go through security. In a lot of cases, you won't be able to check your bag anywhere, because they don't have baggage checks because of the concern about bombs. Europe is just on guard, they've got a lot of challenges, and they've got a lot of soft targets. If you do check your bag in a place that has a security machine, it's going to cost you seven or eight dollars because you're having to pay for that machine. When you're traveling, you need to take care of your money, and you need to recognize that you are targeted by people who want your money. When you master those two areas, you'll travel better. If you've enjoyed this video, you'll find lots more at ricksteves.com and on my Rick Steves YouTube channel. Happy travels, and thanks for joining us.